Hello everyone. In the last few lectures, we have seen that how we can formulate recurrence equations and what are the methodology that we could use to solve those recurrence re equations in practice. However, there are many times we use these recursions in, in helping us to solve a problem and analyze it so that we could also see that which kind of recurrence or which kind of recurrent formulation of to, for the solutions of the problem will give us the best results. Divide and conquer recurrence are one of the prime examples of applying those recurrence relations and analysis into problem solving domain. As the name suggests, we will see in, in this lecture and in the next lecture that how we could take up a problem, how we could split or divide the problem into smaller instance of the problem and how we could combine the answers from those from those sub problems and get back to produce the final result. And we will see that how our recurrence relation and the concepts that we learn in recurrence relations help or aid us in, in, in devising suitable or best possible solutions to the, the recurrent problems in our hand. So to begin with, Recurrent problem solving the divide and conquer way suggests that we will solve sub problems of the problem first and then combine those up to get the final answer. So obviously when we say we will go into sub instances of the problem, so there will be some base instances of the problem which we call as base cases. Those instances are very lesser size problem, maybe one unit of the problem or two units of the problem which we assume to be that it can be solved in constant time. That is, given the question and those smaller units, you could immediately get, get an answer to it. So these are our base cases up till which we will try to produce the sub problems of the problem in a recurrent way. Then the one of the primary steps of such kind of problem solving is obviously when we also try to solve bigger problems, we try to narrow down the problems into a set of sub problems. So suppose a bigger problem, we can break it down into m sub problems, each has ni instances. Remember that this sub problem decomposition is very tricky and depending on these decompositions, your solution complexity or how good you are doing the solution will also differ. Now when you decompose a problem into sub problem, next thing comes that those sub problems can be uniquely solved as we solve the original problem. So they are called recursive way of solving problems. So you try to solve those sub problems recursively in the same manner. So recursively means that you again decompose, again call the recursive routine, again decompose, again call the recursive routine until you hit upon very small, small instances of the problem, which is known as the base cases. And finally, from that step, we try to compose the solutions that are produced. So base cases will produce the unit level solutions, which is come go, which when the just the previous recursive call finishes, that solutions will come back and you compose it and grow up. So therefore, you decompose a problem and suppose decomposing n instance of the problem will take dn steps. And finally, recomposing your decomposed m sub problems also take rn steps to get back the solution for n problem. And the rest is the same number of steps taken for each of the sub problems ni. So let's say tn be the total number of steps taken to compute or solve the overall problem. Then since we decompose using dn, so it is the number of steps or stages to decompose plus the number of stages recursively to compute each of the sub-problem solutions, plus the number of stages to recompose and get back the final answer. So hence, we will see that these are the instances which are more than the, the number of unit instances. And obviously, if we get back in the unit instance or less, we produce the answer as a direct, direct solution to the problem. So pictorially, what we do is that we break down a problem into sub-problems sub and each of this circle is a recursive call to lower level sub-problems. And when we hit upon the base case, we try to compose the solutions from each. So at this level, it is the dn is the decomposition time to break into and you call these sub-problems recursively. 
and then when it finishes the answer then all this m answers come back to this point and you give the result so this time is the recomposition time so your recurrence will obviously be in terms of this format <clears throat> so primarily the question that we are trying to address in in, the, in this and next lecture would be that how formulation of a recurrence and their solution depends on where do we split the problem how do we combine or compose it and get back the final answer you can easily understand that it will depend the way in which we split the way we decompose and the way we recompose this everything will depend how good or bad we are solving the final problem so therefore in the series of next few slides i will first go on uh, an example go on through a set of examples primarily from the algorithm domain where it we use recurrent problem solving in the divide and conquer way to a very large extent and try to first highlight that why such kind of recurrent solving and a little bit of procedures to solve that is meaningful or helpful in order to understand our this divide and conquer recurrences then possibly in the next lecture we will try to use what we ever we learned from this set of examples and try to combine the generalized formula or theorems for deriving such divide and conquer recurrence let us start with our first example so how do we find maximum among n elements given in a set so therefore the base or the fundamental point is that if you are given one element you just return the maximum your decomposition is that you split the elements into two parts i will see that how if my splitting of different parts if i change what is the change in the final number of steps or here in this case the number of comparisons that i get how the recurrence give me that answer to understand that how good or bad i am doing so first i will split it into two equal parts find maximum from both parts and then compare those two part maximum to get the largest so this is a recurrence or recursive problem solving way because i am splitting it i am finding the same thing again and again over the sub parts and then composing or finding the maximum among the answers so therefore you can easily understand the recurrence would be that the number of comparisons that i make for n elements among n elements to find the maximum is i split into n by 2 parts equally so therefore i have to do it find maximum in two different parts so two into this amount of comparisons from each part plus the final comparison between the maximum chosen from those two parts to get my final maximum here you see the steps for decomposition does not involve any comparison so dn is zero in this case steps for recomposition involves a comparison to find the maximum between those two maximums <coughs> so recomposition is one and the splitting is uniform of n by 2 size and two instances so this is the recurrence as per my previous form and i know that in the base case when i reach up to a point where there is only one element i just return that without comparing anything so my number of comparisons there is zero so if i could solve this formula or this recurrence i will get to know that this strategy 1.1 to find the maximum how it is doing so it's a very straightforward if we unfold this one step after another we will get back get to the solution that let's say there exists an k so all of this we will do for large n therefore that k would be we are approximate that k as n equal to 2 to the power k so let us unfold this one so this will be again unfolded as 2t n by 4 plus 1 which means it is 2 square t1 n by 4 plus that 1 into 2 that is 2 and this one is 1 again this step is unfolded as 2 cube t n by 2 cube plus 2 square plus 2 plus 1 so the generically final formula it will be unfolded till this point which means that this quantity reaches 1 because i have assumed for a large n there is an existence of k such that this happens so this quantity becomes zero so it is a sum of 2 to the power k minus 1 down to 2 to the power 0 which is obviously 2 to the power k minus 1 and i am assume to n equal to 2 to the power k so this is n minus 1 what does it suggest that depending on this kind of recursive problem solving by my own strategy number 1.1 i am getting n minus 1 comparisons to find the maximum 
now see obviously i can also change this thing because the split i split it in the middle i could have a different partition or division and a different way of recomposition and and, and uh, good decomposition that will give the change in the recurrence relation so let us see so see here the main fundamental our goal is that before we implement or before we go for deployment of our solution i am using the knowledge of my recurrence relation and formalism to see which is the best way to solve the problem second way what i will do instead of splitting in the middle why not i split one element and the rest one in minus one element so again my one element answer is the base case so there is no comparison involved there otherwise i decompose into every time one element and n minus 1 again one and n minus 2 in this way i go on decomposing i select the maximum among both parts and then compare the maximum to find the largest as usual here you see the recurrence that is t2n the second recurrence gives us that my decomposition or splitting is one and n minus 1 instances and i am come calling it again to solve this plus what else is give is that the recomposition time is one that is also remain here splitting time does not involve any comparison so that is not included so since we are only considering here the number of comparisons if you are to consider the number of computation steps then everything will be added up to up here the splitting will also one step so that will also be added but i am just simplifying it with the number of comparisons and again for n equal to 1 you can easily see that there is no comparison so now you can place this one as zero because you know t21 is zero so this is basically t2n minus 1 plus 1 again you know that how to unfold it so this is t2n minus 1 plus 1 so again this will be t2n minus 2 plus 1 plus 1 will be 2 n minus 3 plus 3 so on so it will reach again to n minus 1 so therefore it reveals that my divide and conquer strategy even if it get a little modified the previous attempt and this attempt does not change the number of comparisons to find the maximum let us see another variant of the strategy instead of splitting it to one element i split it two elements and the rest in minus 2 why i am just changing it from 1 to 2 because see my base case has one element give me no comparison but two element give me one comparison there will be slight change in the recurrence as well so instead of one and n minus 1 partition here i have two and n minus 2 partition and let's see we are doing the rest of the recursive calls and the recomposition similarly so the recurrence here is t2 plus tn minus 2 plus 1 is the final recomposition time for n greater than 2 what if you reach at a base case where n equal to 2 then your comparison is only once to get the maximum so that is one but in this way since you are reducing by 2 if you start with a odd number you will reach to one sometime then your comparison is zero so let us solve this recurrence by expanding here also you can see that t32 is basically one because t32 is nothing but n equal to 2 is the same problem which is one So if we solve this recurrence we get that my t3n is equal to this one is this plus 2 as i predicted because this is 1 that means tn minus 4 plus 4 tn minus 6 plus 6 that's why if i reach to 2 which means tn minus n minus 2 this will be also n minus 2 now if n is even this results as 1 if n is odd then from t3 i can go to 1 and then stop so in both the cases if it is even if it is odd you will see that there is no change in the number of comparisons then we use similar or equal size parts or we may be using one and n minus one size parts so we are now more or less convinced by a different type of divide and conquer that maybe that this is the best we can get now only one particular part remains is an arbitrary partition we started off with 1 1 and n minus 1 2 and n minus 2 let's say we have a arbitrary length partition which is c elements in one side and n minus c elements in the other side and for such kind of an arbitrary partition our recurrence will be that we have c elements and n minus c elements and this c is basically constant 
the base condition can be formed in two ways either you can say that i have one element as zero or you can say whatever be the element c or less than that i will take exactly that many number of times to compare so here i simplified it by one what i will try to show here that what does this recurrence relation lead us to in analysis so because c is arbitrary choice of a constant so to analyze this we need to take an average due to the expected choice of c so we see that c can be 1 up to n minus 1 and every position is equally likely we are not biasing it so therefore we if we try to suitably find how many number of comparisons happen for a particular choice of c we average all n minus 1 possibilities of c which is basically c equal to 1 to c equal to n minus 1 this formula so i see here i say one side partition is 1 and n minus 1 then i took 2 and n minus 2 all of them i added and i just have an average so this will give me an expected value of this particular comparison now this simplified over here by n minus 1 multiplied in both sides so this will be this now see the trick here is that i need to solve the recurrence and find out t this term t4n i replace n with n minus 1 i get this one ready plus n with n minus 1 this n n minus 1 this n minus 1 n minus 2 this n minus 1 n minus 2 now i will subtract the first one from the second this first one minus this one so this will give me this apart from this side will be 1 this term is n plus 1th term is in the first is more 2 into that so it will just give me this if you have simplified this there are two tn depends on tn minus 1 and simplify so what i did is here is that i divide everything by n so if you put this term here you will get here as n into t4 n minus 1 so you divide by n into n minus 1 you will get this which looks better because now i could proceed by putting any n, n equal to n minus 1 equal to n minus 2 and so on till here how does it help because now if i add all of them these two terms cancel similarly this term with the lower left will cancel this term and this term cancels minus plus similarly here the left term with the next right term cancels i 1 by n minus 2 will cancel till this point 1 will remain so it will be 1 minus 1 by n so finally if you add all this you will get this which is our life is simple because t4 1 i know to be as 0 so this is again n minus 1 so see that how before we are our implementation or deployment of a solution that we thought how recurrence relations help us and this is the exactly the purpose of divide and conquer recurrence that i will split and i will combine but depending on the splitting how my strategy changes so this is one example that i have shown that irrespective of any splitting you do whatever strategy you think of you will get n minus 1 number of comparisons to find the maximum among n elements in a set so we started with a equal division we have an arbitrary constant depth division 1 2 n minus 2 1 n minus 1 all such you can also think of an arbitrary fractional division as well you can start off with an n by 3 and 2 n by 3 division both searching for maximum so every time you will reach at this point so it means that this splitting does not impact so much so let us see another example where it may impact how do i find max and mean both among n set of elements strategy is simple for n equal to 1 no comparisons just return that element as max and mean if n equal to 2 you need to compare once right because to larger is the max lower is the mean otherwise you split again into two equal parts let us try to understand every possible strategy that we thought of in splitting here also split two equal parts find the max and mean from both part finally you need to have two comparisons the max of first part with the max of second to get the largest the mean of first part with the mean of second to get the smallest so therefore here we go the time take the number of comparisons taken will be Two times the number of half equal split comparisons plus two because finally we are having two comparisons. And if n equal to two, 
then we have one comparison to declare because two elements one comparison larger will go as max lower will go as mean so this for large n equal to 2 to the power k let us try to solve it in the same way if we expand it this will be 2 square plus 2 into this plus this this will be 2 cube this plus this this will again go gradually by this formula now see where I, why I stopped here because I have n equal to 2 to the power k and my base condition is 2. So n by 2 to the power k minus 1 is t2 which is 1. So this term plus the series of this is basically 2 to the power k minus 1 if I give a 1 addition. So it is 2 to the power k minus 2 because I take back that 1. So finally this will come 3 by 2 into 2 to the power k minus 2 which is 3 by 2 n minus 2. Where does it help? Because unless if we do the max once and compute the mean once as per the previous strategy wise, I will get n minus 1 comparisons for max and n minus 1 comparisons for mean. However, if we have this kind of a divide and conquer approach, I am saving a little bit of thing n by 2 times. Because earlier it was 2n minus 2 if we separately do for max and mean. This equal size splits gives me n by 2 times uh, comparison savings. Isn't it? You are getting here instead of 2n minus 2, you are getting 3 by 2n minus 2. So this helps. So instead of doing it twice, once doing everything with a half split helps. Let us see whether this is the only way it helps or we could go bad or we could, could go better. So again, our next strategy as per earlier one, we do the same thing but split 1 and n minus 1. So 1 and n minus 1 elements, take the max mean from both sets and then compare twice. So this will give me that 1 elements, n minus 1 elements, this many comparison plus 2 times last comparison. Splitting does not involve any, any comparison. So that, that's why we do it in this way. Solve it. This is basically 0 because I know that for 1 element, that is the max and that is the mean. So no need of comparing. So it is 0. So it becomes t2 n minus 1 plus 2. So t2 n minus 2 plus 4, t2 n minus 3 plus 6 and so on. Finally, it will reach n1 as 2 into n minus 1. What does this mean? This is exactly the number of comparisons we have thought of provided that we calculate the max and mean in a separate way, iteration wise. So see, my, if my splitting or dividing here differs instead of half I go for one sided that is one element and n minus 1 I I reach to the exactly same goal of running the same algorithm for max and min twice. So it does not help at all. The next one. What if I go with two elements and n minus two elements? Because see there is a reason why I try to do instead of one with two because two element comparison take one. One comparison to get mean max. But if I always go for the 1 and n minus 2, 1 element does not take any comparison, but n minus 2 adds up two comparisons. So therefore, if I can reach up to two elements at a time, then there is one comparison I may save, which results this recurrence. Let us see, this is our intuition. Let us try to prove it by our recurrence that one side it is t2, another side it is t n minus 2, plus the two times the final recomposition step n equal to 2 is 1 because 2 elements 1 comparison, 1 element no comparison. Solve it in the same way. Suppose 2m equal to n minus 2 if n is even and 2m equal to n minus 1 if n is odd. Then how do we solve? We just expand it to the first instance and finally when we expand it this way, you, we see that the term is increasing as 3 into the number of steps that we take. So since if it is even, we take m amount of steps if, and if it is odd also we take m amount of steps but in even we reach at t2 and in odd we reach at t1 plus 3m plus 3m is the same. Now see here this is the same if it is even. This is a little bad but better than our 2n minus 2 obviously. So what does this strategy suggest? It suggests that indeed that half and half splitting will give you for n equal to even this answer or if n is odd you may you may get another two more comparisons. That's not a problem. For if n is odd you just separate out one element and then do for the even and take that one element to compare last. But 
half and half partition is not the ultimate choice it is one of the good choices or strategies even 2 and n minus 2 elements is also a good choice because it is giving me good answers or the similar kind of comparison number of comparison as answers so therefore i can say that the why always split half i can also do 2 aside and n minus 2 aside this will give me a good result here at least for this case of finding maximum the part so this say this, this suggests that yes we can arbitrarily split it in 2 and n minus 2 so i leave it to you to to judge whether any arbitrary or constant size split will also result you the similar thing or not if i say always even even number of elements in one side and n minus that number of constant even number of elements in one side will always result in this or there is only two element and this one is the same just try to write the recurrence for it and go for solving it as we are analyzing it so here also you see that gradually we are finding yes there is a chance that recurrent might help us to find out the better strategy we will see more let us try to search an element unordered set of elements are there n elements i want to search an element you are obviously heard about this problem in a in a naive way that you go by one by one so at least i mean n comparisons you are definitely need to know if they are unordered but let us try to have a recursive solution strategy going how do we do that let's split in the half for n equal to 1 i just compare and return yes or no otherwise i split the elements into half search from both i return if element found in any of the part it's same as telling us this because only one comparison if it is one element otherwise the number of comparison from left and the number of comparison from the right will give me this because recomposition here does not take any comparisons it just returns if somebody says yes so therefore the number of comparisons here is 2 to 1 in n, n by 2 and this so you can easily expand this one and find out what is the answer it is 2 square t n by 2 square similarly up to 2 to the power k t n by 2 to the power k and i assume big n equal to 2 to the power k so this terms goes as 1 t 1 1 is 1 so it's n so you can see that here middle splitting also and recursive thinking of the same problem does not give you any benefit then you linearly scan and all i i will do that that this splitting if you change the split it's just your linear scan but let us try to see an arbitrary fractional split does it help suppose i have one third elements i put in the left side two third elements on the right side and search for both both parts the same thing i do instead of middle i just do one third and two third so let us see that the reference will be that you search here these are the number of comparisons you search 2n by 3 these are the number of comparisons so the total comparison will add up and for one elements you know there is only one comparison so now you can see that i can prove it by mathematical induction by checking all k less than n values and assuming it ak plus b is my answer then you see t3 equal to 1 because you take a, a and b are constant you can take a equal to 1 minus b so t3 equal to 1 satisfies and tn equal to this same because this is n by 3 it satisfies with k equal to n by 3 it satisfies with k equal to 2n by 3 you just put it mathematical induction will give you this hypothesis is correct so two lessons to learn from it that one is a new technique we solve for recursion instead of just unfolding or doing it's just called by guess and by proof by mathematical induction you can also do try this technique because this is you guess some solution and you support it by some proof techniques however if you try to further analyze it let us try to bound it or see that what happens see here this is t3 n by 3 in the next round of recursive call it calls t n by 3 square and also t 2 n by 3 square this gives t 2 n by 3 square and also t 4 n by 3 square so here this four terms is t 3 square 2 t 2 n by 3 square plus this again if you recursive call you will see it's just like increasing as a recurrence or as a as a binomial or pascal triangle types it adds two of these and produces this one and so on so it's 3c0 ttn by 3q and so on so actually the closed form formula is this and in the closed form formula you can see a bound that it is 
as you can see that this part always dividing by 2n by 3 into 2n by 3 into 2n by 3 so this is the longer branch that you take if you try to approximate by this branch that every computation is the number of child that can be developed through this branch into all possibility so that is the upper bound and this is the lower number of branch where it could will converge to 1 because n by 3 is obviously reducing more than 2n by 3 so then this is a lower bound where you can reach the number of things. So I will show it in, in, the, in, in the, when we formalize such kind of solutions. But the lesson taken here is that this does not change the search complexity. It is a n plus b and in the eighth case you can take a equal to 1 and b equal to 0. So it is just n. Why don't we split 1 and n minus 1 elements? Yes, that's the obvious choice because that's how we are trained in linear scan. It's just that we... We, we search one and call the same routine for the next next set of elements. So this is the linear scan we are talking about and see the linear scan will produce in a similar vein because this is one. So this is T2n minus one plus one, T2n minus two plus two and so on. So in the similar vein, it will go and reach back to n elements. So therefore, see that splitting here does not affect very much in terms of uh, searching an element because it's it's in, in terms of n number of comparisons you need to make to search an element also. Finally, for a constant depth split that is c elements in one side arbitrary and n minus c elements in the other side and then search both return if found from any of the side. So when you say search both that is your primary number of comparisons coming from recurrence to so t4c and this one. So you can, I, I leave it to you to try and say for arbitrary number of C's, which goes this way that again, I will just take an average over C. So it means that this sum is over 1 to n minus 1, any value C can take, I average it out. So this goes here, put n equal to n minus 1, the same equation delivers this, subtract first minus second. You get n minus 1 into this equal to this. If you try to solve it, it just gives you CT4n. If you put it everything this side, it will be n in by this n minus 1 into T4n minus 1. Which means T4n minus 1 is again n minus 1 into n minus 2 by T4 into T4n minus 2. So this n minus 1 and n minus 1 cancel. So it is n by n, n minus 2 T4n minus 2. So see every time is n by n minus i T4n minus i. So it is n by 1 into t1, which is n. So as we can see that here, the first example, when we try to find the maximum, the splitting or types of splitting doesn't matter. Our recurrence relation indeed helped us. When we come for search linear, uh, I mean, an unordered array search an element, the way you split, divide, conquer doesn't matter your conquering or dividing procedure. But however, we have seen that when we try to find max and mean, if we divide it either in half for even for 2 to the power k elements or in, in very naive sense, if we divide 2 and the rest, every time 2 and the rest, it is better. So therefore, this is a handle to you. This recurrence relation and this information are handles to you to first find out and try out your solution mechanism and then try to figure out which one will be the best position, which one will be the best approach to it. The most significant one we will see of these examples is a binary search. Many of you may be hearing this term, uh, that binary search, which means that I have a sorted array of n elements instead of only unordered n elements. It's a sorted. So it's in either ascending or descending order. I give you an element to search from it. Now, when I give you an element, what will be the number of comparison maximum you need in an intelligent way to uh, give me the answer? Or rather, how many elements you need to probe here? So, I probe, I means that it is not the case that I, I only compute the comparison. I, the number of probing means here that I probe some elements. If it is greater, less or equal to three answers, we, I can get by a single probe. So, what will be my strategy? One of the strategy is as we start as splitting in the middle always. So, if it is one, I just probe and return whether that element is what I want to search. Otherwise, you probe in the middle and return if that is the, your element or you split it into two parts. Remember, the array is sorted. So, middle element 
and the element that you are the middle element that you are probing and the element that you have in your hand for searching if the query element is lesser than the middle you know if it is sorted in the ascending order it will always belong to the left part because your middle element is more or your query element is less than your middle element. so therefore query element must lie in the left le left part of it so you only search on the left or you only search on the right and return if you find that element from any one so this becomes gives our recurrence as that every time i only search one half i discard the other half depending on the query element probed into the middle element and the answer it is greater than equal to or less than and this one is to probe the middle element i want to know the number of probing i am doing probing means as i said i can why one probe i can estimate whether it is less equal to or greater than let us assume that that we can estimate by one probe so it is one probe and t any one part how many times it takes if it is one element just one probe will suffice unfold it for k equal to n by 2, 2 to the power k for high uh, value of n so this is n by 2 square plus 1 plus 1 n by 2 cube plus 3 once that is 3 so n by 2 to the power k plus k which means it is 1 plus k because this is 1 as base condition what is k now k is log n base 2 so yeah I, i we can understand that it is 1 plus log n base 2 but uh, we are not still convinced because uh, as i said the role of divide and conquer recurrences is to give you an handle you you change the splitting you change the way you you think and see whether you can do it better or bad so let us try the other way of splitting instead of splitting in the middle who said that always we have to split in the middle let us split one third and two third do the same thing we probe in the one third part if the element that we probe is more than our query element that means our query element will obviously belong to the left of that one third part so i i just invoke that otherwise it will be on the two third part and see the number of probing here the worst case will be always you are in the two third part of your searching worst case so you 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 probe in the one third part you no know, it's it's more so in, you you again go back to the two third part again there you probe in the one third part no it's more so you will so the way you do the recurrence here is that the the worst possibility of probing is you always go in the two third nth part and return by single probe there and return by that number of probes there unfold it i write it here as 3 by 2 so this is n by 3 by 2 square and so on go till this point so let assume that for high very large n this goes to 1 so see my k now my k is now log the base is 3 by 2 instead of 2 now see that in the earlier slide i got it 1 plus log n base 2 when i split in the middle here i got 1 plus log n base 3 by 2 when i split in the 1/3 2/3 so you can easily understand if i split in 1/4 3/4 it will always be 4 by 3 6 by 5 if it is 1/5 4/5 it is 5 by 4 and so on so if you calculate by pen and paper pause this video and calculate by pen and paper which is more you will obviously find this term is more than log n base 2 so therefore we are doing better than probing in an arbitrary fractional way than in the middle let's say we probe at alpha n and 1 minus alpha n splits so if alpha is more that is this since 2n by 3 is more than half so that more part we always land up so this is the more part 1 by alpha n so see now the beauty now here so middle split is better in binary search than in fractional split as per the concrete answer number of probing you are doing but who said you to do one probe let us have a variant instead of dividing it into two parts and shifting the position of splitting why not i split it into multiple parts that is also possible in divide and conquer so let us split in three parts and probe two arbitrarily two positions arbitrarily in one third and one third so we probe one third position and then again after one third that is two third position and break it into three parts 
how does it help because now depending on my query element value i know whether it is in left part i have to search again or i have to search again in between one third and two third element or i have to search again on the right side of the two third element because array is sorted that is what our assumption is therefore wherever you probe you know it is more or less and it will dictate the next searching will be on the left in the middle one third part or in the right one third part it gives us a little bit of benefit because now i will converge much faster in probing because 2n by 3 convergence to 1 n by 3 convergence to 1 will be much faster however you see here you are increasing on one probe every time extra because two time you are doing a probing at one third and two third parts let us see why it results so it will go this way 3 square plus 4 3 cube plus 6 so on up to this this is 2k instead of k so this is 2 log base 3 and in general if you have beta equal size splits instead of 3 equal size splits if i do beta equal size splits so it is instead of 3 it will be beta and beta minus 1 is actually due to the number of probes is 3 minus 1 that's why the number of probes comes here so now you will see that if i increase from 3 to 4 4 to 5 wherever i go this term is more than your log n base 2 so therefore my splitting once is best and middle is blessed not tilted not multiple that i have solved by my recurrence see how it helps that i instead of going into my implementation and running the solution and seeing it i am here analyzing it by my recurrence relation that i instead of having multiple split it is better to have single split instead of having a fractional shifted tilted split it is better to have equal size split still there some story remains how about constant splits you have not checked that let us check that i will split to unequal parts constant minus one elements one element where i probe and then in minus c in the right part see the sorted array and probing a position always gives you the handle to check that if it is more or less whether to go for the next iteration the left side or the right side so that is an immense help for us in binary search than in an unordered array linear search so then my recurrence would be like this because assuming that your c is less than n by 2 this part is always more if c is less than n by 2 so any any of the part will always be more you can also assume c greater than equal to n by 2 then you can go go the other way that is not a problem but one part will be here that is the more size part you can have the same as we have shown for the previous examples the same average case analysis by all possible values of c then subtracting one less n minus 1 and all that but let me show you how it evolves this is basically t n minus c plus 2 and it will go to t 4 c let's say if i have a small constant size chunk i need exactly the element number of probes to do it okay that is pre computed for three elements i have three probes to do it as pre computed and give it to you then this will be this term is c and this is where you reach because n minus n minus c into c will give you c so this is n minus c see how it is converting so it is obviously it is less than that because you can at most go to 1 but if you reach here somehow this is a brute forced number of elements which is obviously how we want to do it is the is the is the bad possibility that is given to it is less than equal to that so it is this one whether if you go to directly to 1 this is this will be this one you just have can check it and why and just take some values and see why this calculation is greater than and less than now see there is a caution it is as bad as linear search if you choose c equal to 1 for c equal to constant a constant value c it is bound upper bounded by some n function of linear n lower bounded by some function of linear n that's why it is not logarithmic at all so it is as bad as linear search if you you can easily see put c equal to 1 everything is n so it is upper bound and lower bounded by n that means t4 in the sandwich pair so it is n time n number of probing so choice of c matters and also 
any choice of c does not bring it down to log n if you consider c as constant so it means the following where do we reach we reach that since log n is for arbitrarily fractional split and for multiple fractional split it is doing better so therefore our first middle split is better than single split in unequal parts double split or multiple split in equal parts then it is better than that also now it is better than even arbitrary splits now we will assume the power of recurrence relations to think that why binary search always splits in the middle i have not implemented i have just calculated by our own knowledge of recurrence unfolding substituting averaging and then rest proven it that why binary search is better to split in the middle so therefore you see that here there are wide range of applications to aid our solving process and in many of the disciplines we will see how divide and conquer helps us not only in the computational parad paradigm or discipline but everywhere how this splitting and problem solving help us to solve big problems in different domains the final example is of sorting and you you know various types of sorting let me highlight some of them one of the recurrence for the, the problem is that i need to sort an n element set in descending order so if it is 1 i just return otherwise find max and call the same recursion with n minus 1 because it's it's my sorting strategy so i can call with a lesser instance this is my recursive call finally when the recursive call ends it will give me sorted n minus 1 elements i i will just put them one by one i first put max and the set so this is a recursive strategy it is indeed the selection sort if you try to remember what do you do you take the max put it in the front and take the rest elements to select the next max and then put it the second position so what you indeed do is that put the max in the front and for the rest you call the same thing again you can do it recursively also this is the way so it is n minus 1 element sorting and finally when you so when you, when you compare an element so this would be n minus 1 steps you will you will, you will do to finally find that whether you to to get the max you do a n minus 1 step here you see your decomposition takes a find max element and in the first example first example i have shown finding max is n minus 1 so your decomposition takes n minus 1 steps recomposition is just returning it is not comparing anything but finding max takes n minus 1 comparison so this is your recurrence this is your decomposition plus zero is your recomposition and if it is one it is zero you can easily solve it by expanding i am not spending much so it is obviously in the order of half n square minus half n is the answer just let us try to improvise your selection sort which you might not have read but maybe tried in your programming assignments that why not selecting the max always i can always select max and mean because i can now use my second strategy which was better not always n minus 1 it was 3 3 by 2 n so max and mean i will select put it in both ends call the recursively in between n minus 2 elements to sort i can do that right max and mean calculate max and mean compute the rest n minus 2 set sort it finally when you return max followed by that set elements followed by mean is your answer so this will take n minus 2 is the recursive call and this is to find max and mean that is the decomposition step and one if it is two because you need to have one comparisons for two elements only to find max and mean in return one after another compute you will find it is better than this because of the fact that where we saved we saved in computing max and mean together we saved in computing max and min together because if we compute separately the max and means then we do 2n minus 2 steps however computing max and min together is saving us n by 2 and that give us this savings so this is less than this so therefore sorting if you do max and min together is better now in terms of number of comparisons at least so here we split is in 1 or 2 and rest in 1n minus 1 this side 2n minus 2 this side there are ways that we could split in the middle what do we do that we split sets into two parts sort them combine them 
So here the crux is that splitting is does not involve any comparison. However, combining that because two sorted arrays, if you have to combine, then you can recursively do it because if one sorted array is empty, you can return. Otherwise, you compare the first element. If first element of the f element first element of the first array is bigger than the second element of the first array, remember now my s1, s2 are sorted. So if the first element is bigger than the second element, then I will put first followed by a recursive call of combine with the rest of the element from the first array and S2. Otherwise, since I am doing it in descending order, otherwise I will combine as B2, sorry, B1 followed by all elements in S1 and S minus B1. Two sorted arrays, see how do you are combining two sorted arrays? Sorted arrays, both sorted arrays are in descending order. So com compare the first, if one is more, then then keep it then then keep it as the first element compare the rest from the one with the with the all from the other that is the recursive way we can do here the recursion is tricky now we are getting into a point that we cannot manually always analyze we need to devise mechanisms for it right so here is a point that see here what we are doing either we are we can have one element less in s1 so j and n minus j suppose all the elements are n and we Split into j elements and n minus j elements, and we are combining those j element array and n minus j element array. So it is as good as combining the number of comparison is the comparison in j minus one element array with n minus j. That is this part when a1 is greater than b1, or j with n minus j minus one array because one element you have kept in the first position and the rest you are comparing. So Whichever will give you the maximum plus one is the worst number of comparisons you need, right? This one is because of this one comparison I am doing every time in the combined step. So if you look it intuitively, you will see that this is nothing but some constant into n number of steps you are taking and we call it as a merge routine in the merge sort that we just discussed. Now see the recurrence. It splits, let's say it splits into arbitrary, if it is splitting arbitrarily ti, is the arbitrary part, Tn minus i is the rest part and this is the combined part which is your recomposition step. For better thing we can always see that it can split half half and combine them. So I am not going to uh, solve this recurrence because maybe in the next lecture we will see efficient techniques to solve it and then come back here and solve it because we have solved enough of such recurrences by unfolding. Let this be solved by a definitive technique that we will learn later. However, the final way we can sort also is that you just choose a pivot element and partition this set depending on whether some elements are more than pivot and less than pivot. So you create a set which is more than pivot, you create another set which is less than pivot. Then you call the same procedure or the sub problem you solve it in the same way for set S1 and S2 and then finally append them. What does it mean? It means every time you see you decompose, you are your partition into left part the bigger elements, right part the smaller elements. Further from the bigger set, left part the further bigger elements and smaller elements. In this way you are growing and finally when you are reaching the base, everything is sorted, you just combine and move off. Unlike this previous case where your combined step is hungry and giving you this part here in the recurrence, your decomposition step is just splitting and giving you no comparisons. Here you can easily see your partition step or the decomposition phase is the hungriest. Whereas your recomposition is just revealing whatever you get. That is no comparison is there. So decomposition or partition you can see for an S if you have to just bifurcate it depending on element. You have to scan all elements. It is just a linear array scanning type of or searching type of recurrence it will be which will result you in n number of scans. So therefore the final array is the number of comparisons in the in, in sorting n element set will be arbitrary split plus your recom decomposition time which is the partition time and your half split if we if we split in the middle. Okay, so your recurrence could vary if you split arbitrarily. It could be n by 3 plus 2n by 3 plus tpn also arbitrary split. Now we need to understand that which is better as in binary search not all splits are the same. 
So here also we can do arbitrary shifting of the splits and analyzing the recurrence to understand that where we stand with this. So by the way, these two sorts I mentioned, this one is quick sort and the earlier slide that I mentioned was a Marge sort. You will, you will learn in your algorithm that much, but it's nothing but a deviation of the divide and conquer thinking that how we split, sort and combine or split in an elegant way, then sort and just directly report that. So depending on that, let, we can we can further see how our strategy or our, or our process of sorting elements differ. So we will solve this, this particular recurrences in the next lecture when we introduce the generalized concept of solving these recurrences. So overall, this is a basic primer to how we use recurrence relations, how there are elegant way of divide and splitting and the whole lot of divide and conquer paradigm stands over such analysis. In the next lecture, we will see the formalisms in details. Thank you.